Kova, ready to get your breakfast? And grab the rest of these eggs here. Homestead fresh. So this morning, my little big Mastiff girl, she's gonna get some fresh eggs from the coop. That's what she's getting this morning. Basically, I crack it, drop it in, and then mix it in with her dry food. Just like that, drop it in there. I'm gonna boil it for a couple minutes and put it in with her food. So I put the shells in her food for her to eat as well. As you can see, there's more than two eggshells in there. That's because I'm gonna have some organic pasture raised, amazing, delicious eggs myself. But here in the homestead, we use everything, nothing goes to waste. So I mix it in with her dry food and she loves it. It's a great source of calcium and other phytonutrients. Hey Kova, are you ready? Oh, yes you are. Yes you are. You ready? She's getting all excited. She knows what's coming next. And all I did was I mixed the hot water with the eggs in with the dry food. And I'm just going to let it sit here on top of the grill outside. It's super cold out, so it'll cool down really quick and we'll give it to her to eat. Hey, Kova. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good girl. This thing works. She's ready. <laughs> Sit. Good girl. She's ready, excited. It's cool off a bit, so we won't torture her anymore. We'll let her have it. There you go, baby. And she loves it. Here she is, just cleaning up the rest of it. And there she goes. She's going to lick that bowl clean. That's a good girl. Good job. Good job, Kova. Everybody, it's the meal preps are here. Oh, this is my second cup of coffee. and uh, I think I'm finally caffeinated enough to make this video. Oh, yeah. Homemade espresso. So I get some emails and I have a lot of people that will ask me about dogs and, 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 and the issue of dogs and how to prepare and sustainability and all that stuff. And uh, I kind of, you know, I don't want to say I haven't made a video on it just because I haven't had time, which, you know, time is of, a, of the essence here. But I just didn't know how I was going to go about making it because when we're talking, I mean, you, we can talk, you can talk to people about a wide range list of things but i feel like when you start talking about people's pets or their pets it kind of brings out an emotional side of it that you know is sometimes warranted or unwarranted so with this i'm just gonna be very generic and basic with my approach but it's an it's important it's an important question it's how how do we prepare and be sustainable for our dogs so in the video you, you saw you saw my english bull mastiff kova She's a brindle. She's about six months old, and she's a pretty big gal. Uh, she's about she's over sixty pounds, and according to what I read, they can you know keep growing until they're four years old. Um, I've never had him. This is my first mastiff. I've had shepherds. I've had other dogs. We do have another dog. He is a Yorkshire Terrier, and uh, we've had him since. Oof, I've had him since I was in high school. So about fifteen, sixteen years now. So yeah, he's a yeah, he's a. He's getting up there in age. You could hardly tell. He's south of five pounds, although he thinks he's a 200-pound mastiff himself. But I digress. So when we're talking about we're talking about this. We're talking about sustainability and preparedness. You know, a lot of people I don't think even look at and address um, the issue of their dogs. And then the ones that I have seen, the videos that I have seen on this topic. They don't really, I mean, the, the, the big thing is just, okay, we'll just store up a lot of dog food, have caches of dog food all over the place. Like, okay, I mean, I guess I guess that's one way to look at it, but to me, it, that doesn't seem very, number one, sustainable, doesn't seem very practical, and it's doomed to fail because the resources will run out, right? And so when we're talking about this, everybody has to kind of find their own way, but I like to take a common sense approach, right? So for a lot of people, if we're talking about, Preparedness is because there's going to have to be a transition, you know, whether we're talking about the Green New Deal, right, or we're just talking about everyday, everyday life, there is going to be a transition. And 
the purpose of what I do is to make that transition as painless as possible, if any, right? And so <clears throat> I do that by raising, raising my own, raising my own animals, growing my own food, living a sustainable, practical lifestyle, right? One that incorporates community, one that incorporates, you know, sustainability, one that incorporates permaculture, working with nature, etc. So when I'm talking about this, you know, that's going to be a different mindset than somebody that says, hey, I'm just going to buy a bunch of, for myself, right? I'm going to buy a bunch of, you know, freeze-dried food, mountain house food, MREs, and once I can't go to the grocery store, we're just going to whip out all these, you know, Mylar bags of food and we're going to start going to town. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, eventually, number one, it's going to run out. And number two, that's a temporary mindset transition, right? And if you think you're going to do that without any gastric consequences, you're highly mistaken. Same thing with our, with our dogs. We should take that same. Well, I'm not saying what to do. I take that same approach, right? If I just... I can store up hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food, okay, I can put them in Mylar bags, and that's great, but eventually that food source is going to run out, and, either, and then that's a temporary transition, and I will have to transition to something else. So instead of just, you know, putting this mindset of just temporary, I incorporate it into my lifestyle, and it's easy to do. It's as easy as what you just saw. So I, I feed a dry kibble, so... This is the blue buffalo wilderness salmon. So that's that's the dry food that incorporates the kind of the baseline of the food, and then I incorporate the livestock animals that I have here locally. So the reason why we went with the salmon is because well, first off, the reason why we went with the blue buffalo is because no corn, no wheat, no soy. Um, I've used I used blue buffalo since the beginning. I mean, since I was in high school. Um, we fed we have fed blue buffalo because it's it's a high quality food. It is pricey, but you know when it comes to food, you know you eat it three times a day. They eat it every day. You want it to be high quality. I'm not going to tell you what kind of dog food to get. Me personally, the price is of no consequence when it comes to making sure that <clears throat> I have what I need to have. And then with that being being a prep being a prepper being somebody who cares about sustainability, um, you can lower those food costs. And we'll talk about that as, as we go on. But essentially, yes, I buy high quality food. I don't want the I don't want the gunk. If I wanted tasteless Doritos in my dog food, I just buy tasteless Doritos and put it in there, right? If I wanted to buy the fillers, I just buy them, right? So I like the high quality. I like the fact that you know the the food is high quality. Every ingredient is deboned. Insert protein source here: salmon, chicken, all that good stuff. It's good quality dog food. The reason why I want the salmon is because we're in a coastal town and salmon is seasonal here in our area so it's for me it's very important to incorporate the biodiversity that's already here locally because that's the food that she's going to have to just get get used to eating because it's what's here it's what's local um and you know i think that's important so with that having the dry dog food as a stable i incorporate the other foods that i we're going to eat consistently so being here we have a lot of biodiversity just what i grow myself what i raise myself chicken duck, heritage pigs. We have a huge elk population here, huge deer population here. We have cows that, that free that feed, uh, pasture here on this property. We have rabbits. So you know what I mean? There is just what we have on this here 50 acres is a large, you know, diversity of different kinds of foods. And those are what I like to incorporate in, in my dog food. And the reason for that is because it's local, it's here. We also have a river that runs through the property where we're going to have the salmon, bass, catfish. So we have a lot of diversity here. So I like to incorporate what we have into our food. And how I like to do it, I do it for safety and convenience. I get a pot, I boil some water, and I incorporate, you know, what I have on hand. So if I just butchered a bunch of rabbits, you know, we had a big harvest, guess what? She's going to have rabbit, rabbit, chicken, and duck for the next, you know, next couple weeks. Or if, you know, we just got an elk or a deer or whatever, or we just, you know, harvested a, a, a kuni red wattle pig or whatever, that's what we'll do. So whatever we eat is what she's going to eat. And that's how I like to incorporate it in there. Get a pot, fill it with water, boil it up, throw the meat in there, let it boil for a couple minutes, pour it in her dry food, voila. And so what's good about this is in case, let's say something does happen. And I don't have access to her dry kibble anymore. Well, guess what? 
she's already used to the food. There's no huge transition. She's already used to the food. She's eaten the food. It's local. The transition, if any, will be relatively painless. And so that's that's how I look at sustainability when it comes to dog food. That's how I look at sustainability in regards to this conversation in general. And that's how I that's how I live as well. Something happens and you can no longer depend on a grocery store. I still want to be able to have a rabbit. I still want to be able to put a steak on the grill. I still want to be able to bake a salmon. You know what I mean? You know, I still want to be able to have elk steak. So I can only do that by making sure that I'm prepared and sustainable. Now, I know there's a lot of you guys that are going to message me already, and I already know what's coming. But we don't live in the country. We don't live on property. I get that. Um, and I didn't always live on property either. When I first started this channel, you saw I lived in suburbia. And I still raised food. I still raised rabbits. You can still do it. It's all, it, it really comes down to it. It's all about what are you willing to do? What do you want to do? Where do you want your sustainability and preparedness model to be? Right. I mean, it, it's really it's really all on you, because especially if you live in the United States of America, we have this great thing called capitalism. Right. And if you allow capitalism to work in your favor, meaning you go out and you create those DIY projects and you go out and you look for preparedness and sustainability, you'll achieve it. Um, but if you're just depending on companies and corporations and big agriculture to feed you continuously and that nothing will go wrong, well, that's where your failure will come. So, like I said, I know when we're talking about people's pets and dogs and, you know, people kind of get, you know, <clears throat> get emotional and there might be some animosity there. But at the end of the day, that's how I look at it. I want to be able to incorporate these, these natural foods that are already here. And I want there to be no transition. I want her to be able to eat sustainably because I'm able to incorporate that in her diet. So when we're talking about feeding your homestead dogs, that's how I do it. And that's how I like to do it. Um, but every, like I said, everybody has to make that own decision for themselves. But at the end of the day, you know, it cuts down on and talk about the economics of it. It cuts down on food dramatically, you know, instead of having to go through, you know, re realistically, I mean, she could easily go through one, two, three bags. Like if I just feed her three bags, three big bags of that a month, no problem. So I can do that or I can buy one bag and I can include all the food that I produce and I can make the food go longer and I can make it last longer. Um, so, so there you have it. Like I said, don't think of this as, uh, don't think of this as, as a chore or something that's laborious. Think about it as a way to save money. Cause I can tell you what the amount of money that you would spend on trying to feed a dog, you know, and trying to save up and bulk up on, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food versus just being sustainable in the first place, I mean, it's going to it's gonna come back to you in a huge return. Um, being able to be sufficient, being able to be sustainable. I mean, if you look at how much canned food costs alone for a dog, a high-quality canned dog food, I mean, you're talking about a lot of money per meal. Now, using a sustainability model, I have cut my food bill for my dog significantly. So it's something to think about. Like I said, everybody kind of has to find their own way. But for me, when I think about preparedness and think about sustainability, I don't think about transition. I don't think about, okay, I'm going to live life like this. And then when something happens, I'm going to live life like this. That's not how I, that's not how I see it. I see it as I want to be sustainable. I want to be prepared. I want to be green. I want to be whatever. I'm going to change my lifestyle to make it match my moral compass and my ethics or whatever. So if you're like me, that to me, that's the easiest way to do it. Instead of thinking, well, I live like this. And then one day I'm just going to overnight be like this. That may work for some people. That's not how I am. If this is my end goal, let's start making my lifestyle reflect that. So that's how I like to look like to look at it. Hope you guys liked the video. If any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, guys, long live the Republic.